centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more, from health and holistic healing to the supernatural. We aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Uh, so I know it's been a little bit since we've done our regular weekly podcast, but we're going to start having them a little bit more frequently again. And we have some amazing guests, including the one that we have today. Her name is Anna Ramondi. You might have heard of her before. She's been on Dr. Oz. She's a well-known medium. Claire, um, she... Besides being a medium, see, we share a uh, similarity of she's also a hypnotherapist and a spiritual counselor, a grief counselor, uh, just big-hearted woman. I'm excited to meet her. I haven't had the opportunity yet, so this is going to be an amazing experience for me. We're bringing her down to Liberate Hollywood on the 24th of February, where she's going to do an in-person um reading for the crowd as well as it's the launch of her book conversations with mary so the most unique and special aspect of this amazing woman is the fact that since she was five years old she had this ability to communicate and was almost blessed with being chosen by the blessed mother mary for her divine ability to share and to transform and to help and to communicate these messages and so I'm excited uh, so welcome in Anna Anna well, thank you so much I'm so excited to be with you today so I would love to start out with you sharing just a little about yourself uh, for the audience I know that you've done many different interviews and things like that and right now you know with the launch of your new book and everything else that's going on um, just what what you would like to share well um, so as you said I'm a medium I'm a born medium so I don't know what it's like not to be able to communicate with those on the other side and I did see Mary for the first time when I was five years old but you know as my life has gone on you know she was my Mary she belonged to me up until I think the last six years when I was getting messages to share you know the words and and, and her love for all of us and I mean all of us all religions all people, whatever their walks of life are, wherever they live, it doesn't matter. She doesn't. She doesn't care. Um, she's coming through in the book to bring us peace and love and unity because that's the only way that we're going to be able to save ourselves. And she gives us hope. So I think that's. Um, sorry about that. No worries. Um, I I think that's um, you know that's the main message. Um, I'm thrilled to be able to have a platform to do this um, because. Um, that's what she wants. I didn't write the book. She did. I was just the one that typed it. Okay. You know, the book is question and answer. Um, but truly I did not write it. Um, she would wake me up in the middle of the night just to, you know, just to give me the answer to the questions that I hadn't answer, asked yet. So, um, it's been an amazing life, ups and downs like everybody else, but this truly has been why I'm living. That's, that's incredible. And you know, Yes, she is the one that wrote the book, but you were the one that created the questions to be able to, you know, channel that information. So, you know, mm -hmm. definitely giving yourself a little credit on because yeah. I've always heard that it's it's about asking the right questions. And, yeah. you know. Yeah, and the questions that I asked were, I think, questions that everybody would ask of her. You know, I started out the book really wanting to know, what do you look like? What was your life like? You know, I mean, I know what she looks like, but I wanted her to say it in her own words, you know? Um, what was your life like? Like, what was your marriage like? You know, that kind of thing. And you, when you read the book, there's a reluctancy on her part to really answer that because that's not her focus. Her yeah. focus is, here are my messages. Here's how to raise the vibration of the world. Um, but she does answer, and she talks about being a mother, you know, and losing a child. Um, which is quite painful and unfortunately uh, way too familiar to too many people. Yeah. But she um, she gets her message across very loud and clear for all of us. Yes. Um, what are some of those ways that, I mean, we are in this dire state of needing to shift and change the energy vibration, the state of the world. I mean, 
you know, they say that it's the darkest before the dawn, but you know, there, there is so many messages of hope coming mm -hmm. out and knowing that there is a possibility and not only a possibility, a reality that we shift this. And, you know, if you don't mind sharing a little bit of those tidbits of what is one of those ways of shifting and changing. Well, she talks a lot about prayer. Prayer and meditation, you know, being going back to the source. You know, I think as a people, as a species, we've moved further and further from the source, from God, from the highest vibration, that vibration of love, viewing God as a vibration of love, recognizing that when we read we're made in God's image, you know, and the pronoun he works, although it's not a male or a female, it's a vibration, yeah. um, that we are made in the image of love. Not in the image of a person. God is God isn't a person, okay? Yeah. Um, and so we're made in that. And so if we're made in that image of love, and we've come here, then and our purpose begins to love each other, like God loves us. We're coming back to it. You know, so often we get so caught up in life and we lose that and we lose the communication. We need to we need to talk. We need to communicate with God. And she's coming through and she's saying, you know, you don't pray to me. I pray with you. Okay, just because it gives you the support in your prayer if you want it. And she loves praying with us. She loves being the mother. Okay, she's the mother of humanity. She loves being the mother. Um, meditation, when you put your mind aside and you go into your heart, into your soul, and you allow yourself to feel is very important. That raises vibration. And then as you do that, you will feel the need to connect with other people or they will be pulled to you by the laws of attraction. You know, um, you know, it's, it's about going into the grocery store and, you know, saying to the cashier, how are you doing today? You know, how was your day? They were, they're shocked when you do that because no one ever pays attention to them. We don't see them. We become a blind society. We're all in our heads. We're numbed out. To speak to people, to talk to people, to feel people, that will raise our vibration and it will raise the vibration of the world. I love that. And it's so true. We are so disconnected, and especially nowadays with technology. I go out to I go out to lunches and dinners and I see people sitting at different booths and they're they're on their phone texting or whatever they're doing and they're not even engaging with the person that they went out with with in along the waitress or the the other people that are there and that's the same all over so mm -hmm. from what i'm hearing is it's about connecting with everybody that's around but also reestablishing that connection with god the higher energy mm -hmm. source with love and looking Absolutely. at that we have support we have support wow. and there's all when there's support in numbers if you share something with one person and they stand behind you and this is what mother mary is doing right is she's standing behind Absolutely. everybody while they they pray and say I'm praying with you. I'm supporting and helping to energize that prayer to know that you're not alone. That's right. And pray in any way you want. Prayer can be a prayer from your religion. It can be just a communication with God and recognize that you're surrounded by the angels. You know, they're with you too. We're not alone in this world. You know, we sometimes feel so alone, so isolated, depending on our circumstances, but we're not alone. Nor, nor are we separate from the energy of people all over the world. It's one energy. You know, I see energy. When I see it, it looks like a grid and it all kind of mingles in with each other. You know, that's the way it is. That's what, that's the way we were created. She definitely stands behind us. She gives us tools in the book to um, go further with that connection, you know, whether it be understanding, you know, heaven and hell, um, which are not the Judeo-Christian versions of it, or, you know, mentioning, you know, um, you know, that she's coming through to the Muslims who venerate her. You know, it's not just for the Catholics, who have held her at so high a place. It's for them as well as it's everybody. for everybody. That's the only way this world is going to heal. And we can have peace someday. She said we can have peace, absolutely. But we really have to turn. We have to turn toward God. Yeah, and, and connect with each other, right? You know, And, and connect with yourself, too. Exactly. Ourselves, God, everybody. But everybody. We're, we're all in this together and when we create the separation and segregation then we create you know war and despair and compare and all of this other right. negative well, you know. judgment yeah when we separate we judge and what is judgment judgment is fear fear is the opposite of love fear Absolutely. says i have no faith and i don't believe in this great power of love um and so that happens very often i mean we can see it in the last you know year 
you know, the hate, the pain, you know, um, whether it's from fear or people just hanging on to the wrong things, you know, um, look at the world, look at things globally, look at your families on a, on a, on a micro level. Okay. So it's micro and macro, you know, what's going on in your house, what's going on with your partner, what's going on with your children or your parents and your friends, you know, being there, feeling, feeling the love between you because that's feeling God. I definitely am right there with you. Uh, is there is there a, a better? I know that there's no wrong way, way of prayer, but is there, you know, um, not a better? I don't I don't want to use judgments or that uh, to describe it, but is there is there a quick way to you know help for those that are listening and that said, okay, maybe we never pray, we don't do this, or you know, we've associated it with a certain like. Um, certain rules and regulations, like I have to pray at this time, or I have to pray kneeling, or I have to pray like this. Is is there, you know, I heard you say there's no wrong way for that connection to be established, but is there um, kind of like a fast track way or one that's maybe more effective for people to try? You know, it's interesting because I asked her that, and I asked her, you know, is there a perfect prayer out there? Um, and she said, whatever is from your heart is perfect, but to pray like this. Thank you, God. And claim the answer to the prayer. Thank you, God, that my son got into that great college, even though he hasn't even applied yet. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Also, you know, um, she talks about, um, you know, the prayer that Jesus gave to the multitude, not because it's a Christian prayer, because it's really not. It was a Jewish man giving it to his Jewish friends in mm -hmm constituents, I guess, um, you know, those, those people that came to hear him. And if you read the Our Father or the Lord's Prayer, you can see it doesn't speak to any religion, yeah. but it covers all bases. Yeah. So if people want to try that, if people are more comfortable with the prayers of their religion, sure, but it has to come from the heart. You have to feel it. Like you just can't be reciting it, yeah. like just reciting it, you know, kind of you, like um, in a kind of <laughs> hypnotic way. Yeah. It has to come from the heart. So any way you pray and anywhere you pray, you know, I asked her what, you know, you know, the perfect religion. And she said, the perfect religion is any religion that is based in love. That's it. That's simple. She says, keep it simple. You don't need to complicate this. So, you know, and she also said, you can worship in your temples, in your churches, or go outside. God created all this beauty outside. It's gorgeous. I'm, I mean, I'm in Florida now and I was sitting in the sun before and it's on water and I was thinking only God could create this. Only God. It's that beautiful. And I started to pray. And my prayer was, you know, I started to talk, you know, just like I'm talking to you now. Beautiful. Appreciate and the listening part of prayer is the meditation. You know, you pray and then you quiet. You get quiet. You take yourself out of your body. You allow yourself to be that vessel of receiving you know, so often, you know, people say, well, I'm a really good person because I give and give and give. Okay, that, that's wonderful. But what about the receiving part of it? When you receive, you allow the giver yeah. a gift. You give the receiver, the giver a gift. It's about receiving too and, and recognizing that you are so worthy mm -hmm. to live in abundance yeah. of love and whatever else that you desire as long as you worship one God. You know, some people get off the track and start worshiping money and all that other kind of stuff. It's nice to have nice things, but keep your perspective. What's the most important thing in your life? Yeah. I mean, just, people can have all this stuff, but if they don't have love and they can't be in the center point, then they're not happy. Mm -hmm. And you said something that, you know, I always say to people and clients and things like that is that there's two major emotions that rule, I think, everything. And that is love and fear. And, mm -hmm. you know, to move away from that fear space and into that love space, you know, and besides prayer, what do you think is some of, or what is uh, some of the messages that you've received that we can get away from fear and the judgment and uh, criticism of thyself and others a little bit, you know, faster or easier? Well, I think if people recognize they are the embodiment of divinity, that they can't be bad, okay? That they started out good. Sometimes we make wrong choices, we have free will, and free will can be a great thing and a really bad thing. So, you know, we make a left on the path and we should be making a right. You know, um, forgive yourself, you know? Forgive yourself, you know, ask the heavens to forgive you and rectify it. 
you know, go on with your life. Look deep within yourself. Again, a lot of this comes from meditation. Yeah. You know, not over processing, not overthinking. We, we over process and over process. You know, we have intelligence, and that's a good thing. We are we are meant to think, but we're also meant to feel. And everybody wants to see. Everybody wants to think it through. But it's the feeling that is so important. Feel yourself. Follow your gut. We're all intuitive. I am not a chosen one. Okay, I just am the one that. That is able to open up my mouth and speak about this. And she's saying she comes to everybody. You know, I asked her, I said, you know, people all over the world are saying they see you on billboards, you know, and sandwiches, you know, like, what's that all about? And she said, see me wherever you want. Just see me. <laughs> oh, beautiful. And so you, you touched on something about free will. Do you, do you believe that there is, or it, in the messages that you receive, uh, free will and fate or free will will versus fate you know what is uh, some of the thoughts on that um you, you know what I, I and i asked her this um we are not fated okay to um a certain life okay so we choose to come into this life on a soul level we choose our parents so that we can learn certain lessons um and elevate ourselves we become more evolved and we come in and um, and we have free choice. So we can go against the blueprint that the soul so wanted to bring through and, you know, go on a wrong path. We, we can absolutely do that. Um, there's no fate. If there was fate, we would be robots. And God wants us to freely come, you know, to, to him, to the kingdom, to this love that, um, you know, that, that the creator is made of. So we do have that choice. It's not fate. It's faith. And there's a big difference. And what about soul lessons? And sometimes, you know, that people say, oh, I have this, I'm working on this lesson this lifetime, or this is in my, my karma to really heal this, or, you know, in, in, in a level, they're, they're re referring to that as it's like their fate to learn this or to overcome this and maybe this lifetime or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true. I think that that's why we are reincarnate. And again, we have free will on the soul level whether or not to come back here. Um, but the soul wants to because it wants seeking to be as perfect in, in that love that is God and perfect in, you know, the divine love. Do we ever reach perfection? Probably not because only God can be perfect, but we, we strive to get to that point. And there are lessons to be learned, lessons we didn't learn in past lifetimes. You know, karma, are, there's a lessons, you know, um, things to break with people. Um, we come, we do that, and we come through in soul groups. And so we know what we have to break, what we have to break, what we need to learn, what we need to teach, yeah. you know, each other. And, you know, you stick to your soul path, um, which is not easy, you know, we're human beings, you know, but you stick to your soul path and you accomplish as much as you can when you choose to come back here again, you come through as an, um, a more evolved soul. Yeah, I definitely resonate with that too. So you touched a little bit on reincarnation, coming back, but also having the free will to choose whether you come back. So what happens after we die? So when we die, um, our soul obviously leaves our body. We don't need this body anymore, okay? Um, and you're met by usually um, a relative or a loved one um, on the other side who kind of gives you the comfort. You know, here you are. Um, if it's a normal death, not a tragic death, there's no confusion. And kind of brings you um, to this room. I don't know how else to describe it. So this is the best way, like in human terms, okay. where there's like a projector and there's a movie going on. Okay? And um, each soul needs to watch the review of their lives. The good, the bad the beautiful and the ugly. And if you're really, you know, you're a really bad person, you're going to stay in that place for a very long time. Hitler is still there because there's still people that have been affected by the atrocities that Hitler set forth. When that last person dies who has not been affected and he can make his amends directly, then he will leave out of that space. For most people, you know, they see it, um, they will cringe at it, and that's the burning of the soul. That's the hell. Having to feel the pain that was inflicted on other people by, by, by the individual, by the soul, okay? Um, because the, the, the worst cr cr crime or sin against human crime 
humankind, humankind is to intentionally hurt somebody. You know, that, that's really the greatest sin. So, you know, we watch that. And then when we get out of that place, you know, there's some learning that happens. You know, the soul kind of learns from the, the elders, you know, the teachers. And, and then there's a decision about whether or not to come back. Some souls hang out longer. Some cell, souls need to be cleansed more. Um, if it was a very long illness, they might need to be cleansed more. Um, and other souls, you know, choose to come back quicker. But their time is not like our time. You know, they're not on the same clock that we're on. Is it a faster clock, slower clock? Slower. Much slower. Life here goes, I mean, in a blink, right? In a blink, you know, you're born, you're 10, you're 20, you're 30, and then you're 90. And it's not quite like that. But they like to come and visit us when they're, you know, they, you know, I'm a medium. So they come through, family members come through. Um, they like to validate, you know, what, who they are and give messages to kind of help us. We have a lot of entities on the other side that try to help us with our lives. So we have our loved ones. We have spirit guides um, who are nobody that we knew in this lifetime, but stay on the other side because they love us so much and want to help and protect us in some way. We have the angels. We have Mary. We have the prophets. You know, we have, you know, those on the hierarchy of our various religions and they're, they're here to protect us, but they cannot affect free will. So they can put something in front of us, and either you recognize it or you don't, you know, but they cannot make us do anything. Like I hear all the time, like, why can't my grandmother help my son? Because your son doesn't want to be helped. Your son is not listening. So it can't happen, you know, but they can put stuff in your path that kind of move you. You got to wake up. You know, it's about awakening, you know. Um, noticing, right? Noticing everything that's around and the synchronicity. Absolutely. They're that's everything. Right. At least in my belief system, I think mm -hmm. that there is no... Uh, there is no coincidence. Like every person that you encounter, every interaction, right. you're there to teach them something and they're there to teach you something. And when you recognize that there is a divine interaction going on at any play, you know. Right. I absolutely agree with it. I'm staying in somebody's house who I met once. Once. Yeah. Um, but I felt a connection and that was it. You know, I don't waste time. You know, time is too precious. You know, so, you know, I need someone, I feel the connection. I can tell right away if they're going to be in my life. Mm -hmm. And that's important. As a healer, I have to be careful. You know, I have pulled in people in the past that all they wanted to do is pull from me, you know, energy vampires. Yeah. And that's okay once in a while for short periods of time, but then, you know, it depletes you. Yeah, it definitely does. And you got to cut those cords and allow them mm -hmm. to be finding that divine source from divine source instead of from right. another person. That's right. You have to take responsibility and not guruize people. Yeah. God. God is the guru. Now, I'm, I'm sure that some people are going to be listening that maybe have had um, colored pasts or different things that maybe they've they've caused intentional pain or done things mm -hmm. either non-intentional or intentional um, where they've hurt somebody and they're hearing about this projector and being stuck into this, you know, kind of purgatory space of feelings and emotions and also having that awareness to come more from a heart space. What steps or what things could they do in this lifetime that could help heal or, or transmute some of that negative uh, impact that they've had on others? Well, first of all, I think this is purgatory, okay? When you're seeing that negative stuff, that's hell, okay? Because your soul cringes. Um, what you can do is truly atone. You know, the Catholics have confession. You know, the Jews have Yom Kippur. Um, and you don't need to follow any of that. You can just sit down and, and really, I mean, God knows when you're sincere, you can't trick God, you know, and truly say, I'm sorry. We, we are from this God that is all forgiving when you come in sincerity. So I'm sorry for those people that I hurt, you know, um, it's still tearing at me, you know, and then, and, and then lift it up to God and you will be forgiven. You will be forgiven. Yeah. But you need to change your ways. Like you can't go out and then do the same thing to somebody else. No. You have to learn from the mistakes. Yeah, because otherwise you didn't learn. So you're asking for forgiveness for something that you're not even right. really. Right. It's not real. <laughs> right. Um, what else? What was one bit of information or question that you uh, were surprised at the answer that you received? 
I was surprised at a couple of things. I mean, I was raised Catholic, you know, um, you know, now I believe that all religions, you know, are good and great. Um, but you know, I always have that background behind me and, you know, she talks about Joseph. I asked her about Joseph and she said, I loved him. I loved him. He was my husband. He was good to me. I had other children with him. You know, um, I love all my children. You know, I asked her uh, the reincarnation thing. I didn't expect her to say, you know, that, you know, here's, here's this reincarnation thing. Here's what happens. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she, um, she talks about, I asked her what constitutes, um, a marriage, what constitutes a family? And she said, wherever there's love. So I said to her, well, what if it's a woman and a woman, a man and a man? And she said, wherever there is love, mm -hmm. you know, wherever there's love. Um, that's what it's all about. And she repeated it. And, you know, sometimes I got it. Sometimes I didn't get it. You know, it was really about um, me also just being able to type this stuff as she was telling me without thinking about it, you know, putting it forward in that way. You know, she talks about so many things. I mean, she talks about, you know, things like energy healing, you know, because I asked her, you know, like, is this real? Is this not real? And, you know, and she said, yeah, you know, and, and then when, when that, the energy mixes with conventional medicine, we will truly have healing. When people raise their vibration, we will have healing. You know, that's what it's all about. So she's, you know, she's not, um, she's not, the, she's not a new age Mary, um, but she'll talk about things that, you know, I, I mean, yeah, that, you know, there's not, nobody has ever had a book like this before where they're, you know, there's been conversations with God, um, but never had a book where they're actually asking her questions and getting the answers, you know, to the book, you know, to the, I'm um, sorry, to uh, the answers to the questions. So um, it was really interesting. And I'm human. So the questions I'm asking have to do with real life, you know, real life. Um, and it's, um, you know, you know, I ask her about near-death experiences, you know, and she says to me that, you know, a lot of doctors are having these experiences now because it, they, we need to validate in this society. We're a society about um, validating, about worshiping. People worship doctors. And so if a doctor is going to come through with this they, and they command respect, as they should, you know, and it's coming from their mouth, then it's, it's perfect. You know, she, she uses the phrase over and over again, right and good. You know, it, that's right and good. And, and that's it. Yeah. You know, she speaks very simply. She doesn't tend, you know, to go, you know, um, complicate what she's saying. You know, sometimes she repeats, you know, like the prayer part and the meditation part because it's so important for us. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I think the book is um, some parts of it. I think some of us know. And there's other parts that it's like, wow, really? You know, I ask her. You know, there's this controversy, and I didn't get into politics with her, so I asked no political questions <laughs> um, at all. But, you know, she was talking so much about prayer, and I said to her, well, you know, should there be prayer in schools? And she, all her answer was, we should pray wherever we go, wherever we go. So, you know, you're sitting in, uh, I didn't ask her about formalized prayer, but if you're sitting in a school and you want to pray, so pray, yeah. you know, pray. You know, if you're sitting in a subway and you want to pray, pray. If you're sitting at home at your kitchen table and you want to pray, if you want to pray in the silence of your heart, pray. Just pray. Mm -hmm. And music. Music's really important. You know, the angels love music. And music is a prayer. Yeah. Many different ways to pray. Chanting. Um, so it doesn't only have to be a vocalization um, where we're talking. It can also be singing, um, playing the piano. Um, chanting, you know, whatever way that you feel that you're reaching that space that's God. I love that. I'm excited to read your book. They just came in uh, just uh, two days ago at the at the center, so I, I haven't had a chance to dive into it yet, but it's going to be my uh, hike in the morning on the mountain and reading the passages. I'm going to love it. Where can people find your book? It's on Amazon. It's at Barnes & Noble. I'm sure it's at other online booksellers. Um, you know, people tend to go to Amazon and, um, and Barnes and Noble, so it, it's there. Um, also, if you go to my website, which is AnnaRaymondi.com, I believe there is a link to the book. And I do Facebook Lives. Um, I'm trying to do them once a week. I'm on a book tour now, so it's been a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. And I do teachings, and it's free, so why not? I did a group reading last week. You know, I do prayers for the country and prayers for the world. So that's an also a really good place, you know, to kind of get the groundedness, 
that, you know, listen, we're all seeking that. We're all looking for peace. Yeah. In connection. And right. Absolutely. With each other. Yes. And we can oh, all God. connect with each other and you on the 24th over at Liberate Hollywood. I hope that... Very excited. That the people that are can come and join us. Um, maybe we'll have a live stream available that day too. So if people can watch and perceive, we'll talk about that offline and see if that's something that you're open to. Otherwise, but uh, on the 24th from 1 to 4 um, over at Liberate Hollywood. And um, people get the blessing of getting your book if they're coming. So I hope that a lot of people can join. Thank yeah, you. I think it's going to be wonderful. I look so I look so forward to it. I'm looking forward to meeting you in real life and giving you a big hug. I can just feel your ah, energy. It's right back at you. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. If, if there's anything else that you would like to leave the audience with, uh, what would you say? It's important for us to have hope, to hope, and understand that we can have a better tomorrow. We can find that joy we're seeking. It, it's not eluding us. We're not living in this abyss. It's there for us to take. We just need to open up and to love. Uh, that brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. You're very welcome. Uh, and on that, I'm looking forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Okay, me too. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.